The heart consists of many cells. Now, basically, there are two types of cells that are present in the heart. One is called muscle cells, and the other one are pacemaker cells. The muscle cells are abundant in the muscular layer of the heart wall, and they're the ones that are going to be responsible for con contraction and relaxation. And therefore, they're called working cells of the heart. Now, on the other hand, there's another ki kind of cell uh, in the heart called the pacemaker cells. These are the ones that are responsible for either the generation of electrical current or, and I should say, the transmission of electrical impulses from one area of the heart to another. They have the ability to generate electrical impulses spontaneously on their own, which brings us to the characteristics of cardiac cells. There are four major characteristics of cardiac cells, and the first one is automaticity. Automaticity is the ability of the heart to generate electrical impulses without influence of nervous system control. This is specific only to pacemaker cells. They rely on electrolytes, and that's why it's important to have a good balance of all the electrolytes in order to ensure a fully functioning electrical system of the heart. These electrolytes include your sodium, potassium, calcium, as well as magnesium. Another primary characteristic of cardiac cells is excitability, the ability to respond to an electrical stimuli. So when an electrical stimuli arrives in a cardiac cell, they're able, therefore, to respond to it by contracting and, therefore, ensuring the heart's pumping ability. These are shared by all cardiac cells. Another characteristic of cardiac cells is conductivity, the ability to transmit electrical impulses from one area to another. So they conduct electrical impulses to cardiac cells. And this is going to be a characteristic that is shared by all cardiac cells. And lastly, contractility. These are specific to uh, the muscle cells. And once the muscle cells are receiving a stimuli, they're going to contract or to shorten and therefore allowing for it to eject blood to all parts of the body. So these are all the characteristics of cardiac cells. Now let's talk about how a electrical current is generated and how it is going to be spread from one area of the heart to another. Let us now talk how electrical currents are generated within cardiac cells. So let's talk about the cardiac action potential. Now, if we take a look at a single cell, and that cell is resting, it's in its resting state, it is characterized by the preponderance of electrolytes inside the cell, which are going to be potassium, and sodium is going to be predominantly in the outside of the cell. So, this is in a polarized or a resting state. Now, in a resting state, the characteristic is accompanying this sodium on the outside of the cells are positively charged ions. So, there's a lot of positively charged ions within the outside of the cell. In comparison to a negatively charged ions within the inside of the cell. So these are the positions of major electrolytes in a resting membrane potential. Sodium is dominant on the outside of the cell. Potassium is going to be dominant in the inside of the cell. And accompanying these is in the outside of the cell they're predominantly positively charged, and in the inside of the cell, 
they're predominantly negatively charged. Now, when there is going to be an exchange of these particular charges, what's going to happen is there's going to be a difference in their membrane potential. And what happens is sodium will now enter into the cell and potassium is going to leave the cell. The process of sodium going into the cell and potassium leaving the cell is what is known as depolarization. And depolarization is going to eventually cause contraction or the shortening of muscle fibers of the heart. So again, in a polarized state, the sodium is outside, potassium is inside the cell, and when once there is an exchange as a result of a stimuli, what's going to happen is sodium enters into the cell and potassium leaves the cell. This process is what's called depolarization, which eventually leads to cardiac contraction. Once the stimuli obviously is going to uh, cease, then there's going to be a recovery. The sodium and the potassium shifts back through the sodium-potassium pump. And this particular process of returning back the sodium outside of the cell and potassium inside the cell is what is known as repolarization. All these cardiac events on a cellular level is going to cause waveforms and that's exactly what we're going to talk about when we're going to talk about the waveforms of the electrocardiogram.